Peace. Assalamu alaikum. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Podcast. This is a very old episode of the podcast recorded back in July, June, and it's taking me a minute because it's very vulnerable to actually release it because I'd be making excuses for why I shouldn't release it or I can't release it. And now is the time to release it. So I appreciate everyone who has come to this episode to enjoin in some vocality of what it is that we think we should not say or cannot say. Um, and I want to offer that this is a part one because since this part one, I have done even more self-developmental work. I am in my spiritual coaching um, schooling and that is just in the beginning of our schooling. It's been very intense and very deep. So I'm learning and uncovering more about myself in this specific situation, being a generational curse of just not speaking up, not speaking forward. Um, so I want to offer that. This is a very intense, very personal, very vulnerable episode. I hope you all enjoy. This is a part one. We'll get even more vulnerable in part two. God willing, when that will come up. And I hope you enjoy. Peace. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, family, to Tea Time Podcast by Atiyah J. This is your self help, spiritual podcast, uplifting topics we all love to avoid, but we definitely need to conquer. Tea Time is your moment to pause, listen, and absorb what is soothing to you. I'm Atiyah J, aka Tia, a certified holistic life coach, and this idea was sparked by my passion to help others discover their latent potential, purpose, and significance, especially if you are one who feels overlooked, alone, or forgotten. You are not alone. You are not forgotten. I see you, and I feel you. Welcome to Tea Time Podcast. Enjoy the tea. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome everyone to another episode of Tea Time Podcast. It's your girl, Atia J, aka Tia, aka TT. And we in the car, as you can see, again, we've been on the go. I am going to start with a story. This is going to be a nice, concise, very vulnerable episode. But I've had it on my heart for a few days now to share this story. So, I have two stories actually. One is mine and one is a story of my experience of somebody else's story. So let's start with my experience of somebody else's story. So while speaking with my mother, I forgot what we were speaking about. She told me a story about when after, almost right after my father left, a few months after, she wasn't working because she was a stay-at-home mom. He wasn't financially supporting her and she had the three of us. She had me, my two younger sisters, and she didn't know how she was going to support us. So she told me that there was one day she remembers where there was no food in the fridge for her to eat, not for us to eat as babies. And she got a call from a sister in the mosque. Shout out to Sister Pam. She got a call and Sister Pam said, hey, do you need any groceries? Sister Pam did not know what was going on in her fridge, but something put it upon her to call and ask her. My mom said, no, I don't need any groceries and hung up again. Sister Pam called back again and said, hey, are you sure? Do you need anything? If there's anything you need, I'm about to go grocery shopping. Do you need groceries? My mom said, no, I don't need anything. Knowing that in the fridge, there is no food for her to eat, nor is there food for us to eat as babies. And she said, no, I don't need any food. Hung up. Sister Pam called again, she said, and said, hey, are you sure that you don't need any groceries? And my mom said for the third time, no, I do not need any groceries. Thank you. While looking at that empty fridge. <laughs> so... She said that eventually Sister Pam just came over with bags of groceries without asking. She brought groceries to my mom and my mom broke down crying because of how kind Sister Pam was to bring her the groceries. And she said that she did things on her own. And she said it kind of like how she said it was kind of with pride. Like even in my deepest 
darkest moments, I did not ask for help. And she, not those words specifically, but that is the essence of what I was getting, that there was a pride behind, I didn't ask for help, I denied help, and I received help because Allah has me, Allah has my back. And I was listening to her story, and to be honest, I was like, that's crazy as ever. That is crazy as ever. You don't have any groceries. You don't know how you're going to support yourself and your children. And somebody calls you three times to offer help, which is clearly to me, that's a sign from Allah, God, that, hey, I got you. Receive your gift. Receive your gift. Allah gives mercy. Allah gives grace. Here's your mercy. Here is your grace. You're a mother taking care of three daughters. Of course, I'm going to take care of you. Here you go. And my mom denied, in my perspective, that help from Allah was denied. Denied. Thrice. (laughs) Three times. And Allah's mercy is so beautiful and so bold and so grand that he put my mother in the position to where she could no longer deny it. And because she was face to face with the help that she needed, she broke down in tears because she was able to finally receive it. Her heart was softened in my experience of her story. Uh, Well, in my experience of her story, I thought she was crazy as ever. And that story, how she told it really stuck in my head. Um, Fast forward. (laughs) Me. Right. Because I thought that was crazy as ever that my mom would deny groceries that she needed three times. So me fast forward when I was in the third grade, I went to a school called Beach Elementary in, in Southern Maryland, where we lived. We moved a while after my father had left and my mom got a little bit of footing. And in Beach Elementary, I was in the third grade. I had skipped second grade. I was extremely shy. I did not want to speak to anybody. I felt that my presence was a bother. Um, The teacher acted that way because the teacher did not want me to skip a grade for some reason. And she was mad that I was successful in doing so. Whatever. So I felt that I was out of place and I should just be quiet. I should be still and I shouldn't make too much of a ruckus. So... I'm at recess one day. We're out at the, I believe it was tennis courts. It was like tennis courts that we would play at. We'd be running around playing freeze tag, everything. And I'm playing, playing something. We were lined up. We were all lined up. We were playing some type of game. And I have to pee. (laughs) So I have to pee and I'm like, no, I'll hold it. I'll hold it. Recess is only 30 minutes. I'll hold it. I can do it when we go back inside when we're when we're given the time to pee and I have to pee and I'm standing there in line still holding it still holding it eventually I pee on myself the pee comes out of my pants and there is a puddle under me and I am so embarrassed and I run away and I tell the teacher and they bring me inside and I have to go home for the day because I have no change of clothes my mom had to come and get me so when I used to tell that story I told that story and said Yeah, I I had such big FOMO, fear of missing out, that I did not want to leave recess to miss out on all of the fun that we were having playing that game. When being authentic and being honest with myself, I was too afraid to ask the teacher for me to go to the bathroom. I, I could not ask the teacher to use the restroom because if I did that, I would be disturbing the teacher's time They would have to walk me all the way inside of the school so that I could use the bathroom. And I'm out of pocket because that wasn't the time allotted for me to go to the restroom. So what is the viable solution in my head at the in third grade TT's time head? Hmm. Pee on yourself, girl. You need to pee on yourself. You should stay still. Hold it down. Don't do anything to disturb the process pee on yourself and so I peed on myself and in peeing on myself not only did I disturb the process but I also disturbed my mom's process at work and I disturbed my own process because now I had a big puddle under me and I had an answer for that the next day at school people I remember somebody said they thought I transferred (laughs) they thought I transferred schools because I was just gone so abruptly all of that to say Recently, 
I shared on my Facebook profile, on my social media, um, that right now, um, just as an update, my family is in Whitfield, Virginia. We've been here for more than a week now because we moved into a travel trailer. We're on the way to Texas, headed to a stopover in Tennessee. And about an hour away from our stopover in Tennessee, a t- two tires blew out. Two tires blew out, but one of the tires on the passenger side blew a huge hole in the kitchen floor and blew all the cabinets out in the kitchen. So clearly the trailer is not livable. And we have been sitting in Whitfield, Virginia, um, a place where math, you know, we're not getting jobs, we're not working, and we're spending money on hotels. So we financially were in a pickle, a huge pickle, while waiting on our insurance to take care of us, which we're still here, still waiting. Um, Finally, we got an update that it is a total. So now we need to wait for the total process and what that would be. And we're in a position where we need to purchase a new home now because we were living in our travel trailer. We're not returning somewhere right now. And we were on the way to go live in a new state. So all of that being said, we were in a pickle. We are in a pickle and we needed help, financial help. We got financial help without asking for it. People just shared and I I truly appreciate it. People shared financially to help support us as we waited. And then while in this pickle, I got selected and I, I was... I am very grateful for being selected to join the a spiritual coaching program that I have been excited to do since 2020. And this was my moment to do it. And I knew I was going to be accepted in the program. And in the position I was in, one, I forgot that acceptances were coming out at this time. And then two, I was just so focused on where are we going to live? Where's our home? What is going to happen with us? Where am I right now in Virginia? I was so focused on other things that it was stressful when I received my congratulations. You're joining that you have been accepted into the spiritual coaching program. And y'all, I have poured my heart, my time, my essence into the application process, into the two, two conversation processes that go with it. I poured my heart and soul into it. I want this. I desire this right now. And this is the time for it. And I had no idea how I was going to cover the commitment fee that was due two days after I received that email because we had not been working the way we had planned to be working and we were not in the place that we had planned to be. And that set us back financially. Um, So while we were financially taking care of being able to pay for the hotel and being reimbursed for the hotel, I felt I could not, and there was not a, well, no, not I felt. there. We did not have the money at the moment to put $500 into uh, my spiritual life coaching like we had planned we would be able to do. And I was distraught. I emailed them and I said, hey, you know, is there a scholarship? Is there anything that I could do? I didn't know what to do. And me sending that email to even tell my story, to ask for help and ask for a scholarship was awkward. I do not ask for help. I figure it out. I keep it in me. I figure it out, especially financially, because I should have figured that out on my own. I should have that taken care of on my, by myself, right? That is what was all up and and down and around me that I was struggling with. However, I wanted so, not badly, (laughs) it, it was so in my essence and in my soul for me to be in this program at this time that I knew I needed to send my email, I needed to send my story, and I needed to ask for help. So I got a response from the program and they said they didn't have any scholarships they prayed with me you know that if this was the time that there will be a a way made I said yes absolutely believed it and what had been on my heart (laughs) um, for a while even before this situation was that I needed to ask my friends my family for help 
Now, it had been on my heart that I needed to ask my Facebook friends, my community for help, financial help. And I was like, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Why? Because I had the spirit in me deeply ingrained as I told my story of my mother, which is the generation before me, and my story about how deeply rooted that not asking for help is to the point where I thought I was bothering somebody else's existence in the third grade just to ask to go use the bathroom at a random time, at a time that was not prescribed to use the bathroom. I felt deep within me that it was absolutely terribly wrong for me to ask to use the restroom, a natural occurrence, at the wrong time. To the point that I peed on my own self. I sacrificed myself, my well-being, my health, my clothing, because I did not want to ask. Because I felt that it was wrong for me to ask for help to go use the bathroom at that time. Being very extremely vulnerable, I did not want to ask for help put out a video asking people for help to pay my $500 commitment fee. I felt that that was wrong. (laughs) I felt like I should not do that. I had the essence of my mother who looked in her refrigerator, saw that there was no food, and when even just offered help, not only did she not ask, but she denied the help that was given to her without having to ask. That was in me. And I kept having it in me. God kept telling me, post a video asking for help. 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 (sighs) Y'all, you don't understand how uncomfortable and how much I did not want to post that video asking for help. I did not want to post that. That was an instruction given to me on my heart even before this occurrence happened, my current situation happened. It was on my heart and I ignored it. On my heart and I ignored it. And because I was in a vulnerable, open position where I just opened my heart and my soul up to the instruction that God had for me, what his will and his purpose was for me in that time, I finally surrendered to the instruction, make a video, ask for help. And when I did that, I received so much help. I truly, truly, truly appreciate it the people and everyone that helped me to pay and I was able to make my commitment fee for my spiritual coaching program. So I am truly, truly grateful. Not just because I'm able to do the program because of your support and help. However, I was also able to break and or in the process of breaking that general curse, gen, gen, uh, uh, excuse me, generational curse of being afraid to ask for help. That was a curse. And I've said many prayers asking a lot to help me to break generational curses, especially after I had my daughter. So I didn't realize how hard <laughs> this mission would be. You do not understand the resistance in my body that I had to making the video just asking for help that I had. Because in my family, When you ask for help, that's showing weakness and you're also using other people. In my family, you don't put your business out there of what you're lacking in to other people. And that has to go. It it doesn't work. (laughs) It, It puts me in a dark place. There literally there are government programs out there that I could have used for going to college that I could have used after college to support me in rent and housing. There are even programs to help me with credit that could have helped me with um, having a 10,000 million credit score right after I got out of college. But I was taught and not like mouth to mind, taught with words to not ask for help, but I was taught to not ask for help, to not receive help, that welfare was bad, that these things were bad, that I shouldn't do it. Meanwhile, after I uh, left, when I lived in Baltimore, I was in a position where I I couldn't pay my rent (laughs) at a certain moment. So I I needed to ask for help. Um, And when I asked for help, I didn't really get favorable results. 
However, that put a fire in me. And I sought help elsewhere. And that's when I was able to get food stamps and that helped me out greatly. And that's when I started my photography business and that made me realize that I can do things on my own in a creative way, in a way that I enjoy to support myself. And there were just lessons that I learned in dropping my guard and opening up and asking for what it is I need. And that is the key lesson that I wanted to share. In this episode, I'm sharing my experience of conquering fear of asking for help, asking for what I need, asking for what I want, asking for what I desire. Because as a believer in God, God says in many scriptures, the Bible, the Holy Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, ask for what it is that you want ask for it and I realized that my mindset of I just have to work I just have to put in grit and double down on what it is I'm seeking that mindset of being afraid to open up and be vulnerable and actually ask for help when I need it not because I'm not taking advantage of anyone I work damn hard (laughs) I work damn hard every day at somebody's job and my own work and my on myself and my self-care and definitely on my family, my husband and my children, I work damn hard. So if I need help, I have the divine right to ask for that help because God told me to ask for help. Ask him. And this is this brought me to the story. It's funny how it kind of adds up just the numbers, but my mom told me that three times she denied Sister Pam when she offered help to her. And it reminded me of the story of the man who was drowning. He was in the ocean, his, his ship, a storm wrecked his ship, right? And he started, he was in the ocean swimming, trying to keep doggy paddling, keep up. And he was about to drown in the ocean and he prayed, oh God, please send help. Please allow me to live. Please allow me to live. And God sent a little canoe or a little, little, little boat, not a canoe, a canoe can't be an ocean, but God sent a little boat. And, and the man in the little boat saw the man drowning and said, Hey, do you need help? And the man said, no, God's going to send help. Thank you. And the little boat said, are you sure? And he said, yes, God is going to send help. I don't, I don't need you. And the man in the little boat kept canoeing on (laughs) and, a bigger boat a little medium yacht right a man in a yacht came by and said hey you're drowning do you need help and the man drowning said no I don't need your help God is going to come save me and the man in the yacht said are you sure I can put you in my boat and we can get to safety and the man drowning doubled down and said no God is going to send help for me I don't need you (laughs) and the little yacht the yacht moved on now a huge naval ship comes by and the naval captain comes and says hey do you need help to the man drowning and the man looks at this huge naval ship and the navy captain and says no i do not need your help god is going to save me and the navy captain looks at him crazy and says you are going to drown Are you sure you do not want to get on my huge naval ship? I am bringing you to safety. And the drowning man doubles down, triples down and says, no, God will save me. So that naval ship went on. And as you can imagine, the man drowned. So the man drowned and he goes to heaven and he asks God, God, why did you not save me? And God looks at him and says, my child, I sent you three ships and you denied them all. We have to understand that God's word is physical. God's word is spiritual and God's word is mental. There's no limit to it. So God's help doesn't mean that he's going to come and swoop you up and He's going to speak to you and I mean, he, God speaks to you, but he's not going to come in in a form that is not matching what it is that you need to help you. So if you need help financially, God is going to give you help financially by the means that is going to help the situation that you are in, in the moment. So that means if I have two days to meet my commitment 
And I ask God for the help so that I can make my commitment, especially in the situation I am, I am in, God is going to give me instruction on how to get that help for what it is that I need. He's not going to tell me to go get a job and you should have just done better because God already promises us in all of his scriptures, the Quran, the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, um, even books like the alchemist in those stories and in, in the stories of people who are successful in thought leaders, God is going to give us tasks that break down our character so that we rely solely on him. So it broke me down. <laughs> to make a video asking people for help on my social media because that's not that's frowned upon in my family that's that's not something standard that's not what we do to the deepest level you all don't understand <laughs> so for me to do that was very unnatural for me and how i was raised however it made sense it made sense for how i want to be who i want to be and what i would give to others as well so I truly appreciate all the help that I got, not just for the monetary reward that it gave so that I can commit to my program. And that gave me a break so that f after we figure this trailer thing out, um, I will be able to make the payments for the rest of my program. However, I really truly deeply appreciate it in my soul because I opened myself up to receive in a way that I never have and never thought I would and is against what I was taught. And that was received for the most part by so much love from my community, from my friends, from my family, especially my friends. And I truly, 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 truly appreciate you all. Even those who shared and those who said prayers, all of that, all of that truly is helping me to become a better person, to build my character, to help purify me. And I really appreciate it. Um, so this podcast has been on my heart for a while. In this, we're conquering fear of asking for help. And I would just say that the stories that I shared in this episode are powerful. And I pray that this will help you to think of your own story. When it comes to needing help, how do you react? What do you first go to? And how do you, how has God worked for you? <laughs> In reflection, how has God worked for you? I said my temperature was too hot on the camera. Get it out the sun. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is a hard episode too, y'all, because I'm being very vulnerable. And it, that's something I pray for as well. So I appreciate everyone who has listened to this and I pray that it can be helpful to those who listen. I pray that my story touches you. It brings light, love, and peace to you and your story or help you on the path to that. Um, but I just truly appreciate this experience because I didn't realize how averse I was to just asking for help and also receiving help. That's another thing, oh Lord. I felt awkward and I felt wrong using the money <laughs> that people sent me to do spiritual life coaching to, I, I felt awkward actually paying for it. And to the point where it's like, it, it was uncomfortable physically. So I truly, because of this situation am breaking some generational curses because that the bind that I felt was not even me. The bind that I felt was not even mine because I know I'm the type of person to offer help when I can to anybody. Help is, help is, receiving help, hmm, it's a gift. It's not something you deserve. It's not something that you've earned with something else. It's, it's literally a gift. And it's a gift from somebody who has the blessing to be able to give it. And they are rewarded for that. And when you give a gift, you create in somebody else the will to give a gift to somebody else. And that's, imagine if that was our currency in the world. Imagine if our currency wasn't money, but our currency was, I do this for you because I have the ability to do it. That sparks the same heart in you. 
because you have the ability to do it, then you're going to do it for somebody without anything in return. That's what we've been experiencing on this journey, just with um, even the frame of our trailer being fixed for free. A whole welding job, putting a whole new frame and supports into our under our trailer for free. That's what we've been experiencing. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. And I thank God because for the first time, I did not drown. <laughs> so I thank you all for who gave me some life supports, who picked me up on their boat, and um, who picked my family up on their boat too because now Journey will know better, Khalik will know better when to ask for help and that he's deserving of receiving help. Not because of anything he did, but because that's how the world can work. We can work out of love. We can receive gifts that we haven't quite earned because we do that materialistically. For my birthday, somebody might want to give me a gift. I didn't earn it from them. But why can't we do that spiritually? Why can't we do that mentally? Just giving a gift because I have it in my spirit to give and I'm able to do so. I am complete in this episode. Um, So shout out to you all. I hope that the words that I've shared in this podcast can be uh, not pleasing. What's the word? Can be useful, purposeful for you. Um, I'm all about just sharing stories, sharing my heart to spread peace, love, and light. Um, So thank you for tuning in to Tea Time Podcast. Make sure you follow Tea Time Podcast on Instagram at, at Tea Time Podcast. You can follow me on YouTube at YouTube at by Atia A T I Y A J. And don't forget to follow my vlog too at Caught in the Web on Instagram. And uh, what else? Oh, visit buyatiaj.com. You can buy yourself a Tea Time Podcast mug that would support our family. If you supported our shop, we have some awesome things in there. If you have any suggestions for things that you would like to purchase or think items and stuff that you would like to see on the website, let me know. Also, if you have a story to share and you ever want to come on the podcast, m- email me at teatimepodcast at gmail.com. And I would love to have you as a guest on so you can share your story and share your word that you have because each of our stories and experiences are a gift to somebody else. And it's beautiful and a blessing to be a gift. Uh, So I appreciate you all for listening. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace. Peace.